Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about the JavaScript ETU testing frameworks. What are the frameworks that are available for making the JavaScript ETU testing? Let's try to see in this video. In the previous video, we have seen about the unit testing frameworks, right? So those unit testing frameworks, we can use it for integration testing also. But ETU testing frameworks are little bit different. Let's try to see. So first of all, before knowing about this ETU testing tools or frameworks, First of all, we need to know what is ETU testing or functional testing. ETU testing or functional testing controls browsers and simulate user behavior in the browser. So that means ETU test, what, whatever the ETU test you write, it will control the browser. That means it will open the browser and it will do accordingly what the user actually does in the browser. So by clicking, typing, scrolling, etc. And make sure these scenarios actually work from the point of the view of an end user. So how exactly the end user performs the actions? In the same scenario, the ETU test also performs the, like the same thing. Let's try to see what are the frameworks that are available in the ETU test. First one is in Puppeteer. Puppeteer is a Node.js library developed by the Google. So here it is, it was developed by actually by Google. It provides a convenient Node.js API to control Chrome and headless Chrome through an API the browser exposes. So that means it provides a Node.js API to control the Chrome. Or the headless chrome headless chrome means if you access this headless chrome you will have all the apis chrome api the browser exposes whatever the browser has the apis it you will be having access to the pup update the dev tools protocol when chrome is is running in headless mode it exposes api to control it so whenever you open the chrome in a headless mode it exposes and it has some api to control the browser so you can control the browser using that api Puppeteer is the JavaScript tool <coughs> that Google provides to control it. So Puppeteer is normally it's a JavaScript code tool that provides to control it. Puppeteer is maintained by Google and has a big community that uses and develops tools and wraps around it. So Puppeteer is an maintained by Google. Since it is native and uses the latest Chrome engine, it is very fast. So as this uh, Puppeteer is uh, belonging to the Google, so it have access to the Chrome. So latest Chrome engine, it will have access to the APIs and for that reason, it will be very fast. So one of the major drawback of headless Chrome is the puppeteer as well. It doesn't support the extensions like the flash. So some extensions will be there, right? So it doesn't suppose support those extensions. Why? Because we are accessing the Chrome through the headless. So headless Chrome is just a regular Chrome V59. So that was launched with the hyphen hyphen headless flag. So whenever you launch the Chrome with hyphen hyphen headless flag, then you will be able to open the Chrome with headless. So when Chrome is running in the headless mode, it exposes API already we, we know about this one. So in, in the end of 2017 or 2018, I think Firefox has also released their headless mode also. So Firefox also has their headless mode. So we can open the Firefox in the headless mode also. So that we will be opening through the, now what we can say through the coding. So this is about the puppeteer. Playwright, another one is a playwright. So playwright is like same like puppeteer only. So it was extended to more, a puppeteer extended to more browsers, but this is extended to more browsers where play, play puppeteer supports mostly the Chrome, right? So why? Because it was developed with the Google. So it has some tight relationship with the Chrome, but here playwright is like puppeteer extended to more browsers. So now here, this one is developed by Microsoft by the team that originally developed by puppeteer. So the team who, who has developed the puppeteer, the same team has developed the playwright, but through the Microsoft. The library automates Chrome, Chrome, Firefox and WebKit Safari by using the DevTools protocol for Chrome and similar technologies for other browsers also. So we, as we already know that Firefox also supports this headless protocol and all the things. So if you open the Chrome or Firefox or Safari in headless mode, so you will be able to access the APIs and with that APIs DevTools protocol, you can be able to access the browsers. In the, so another one is Protractor. So this is also one of the Thing. So now you will be able to understand that Playwright sub, uh, supports the cross platform, supports multiple tabs. These all the things, these all the things are supported by the Playwright. But this is very fresh, very new. This one it was released in January 2020 or something like that. So it, as it is a new, so for some breaking changes or something like that, it will be there. So that is the main reason. So it was a pretty new that one. Now let's come to the Protractor. So as you already all of them aware of this Protractor, Protractor is a library that wraps Selenium and provides us with improved syntax and special built-in hooks for the Angular. So this Protractor is an ETE tool. So it is mainly used for the 
angler angler officially supports this protractor but angler team plans to deprecate this protractor at the end of 2022 so angler itself doesn't support this protractor they are planning to deprecate this uh, stop the support of using this protractor in the angler but normally protractor is also one of the tool for using this etu test framework angler has special hooks although it can successfully be used with other js frameworks so now protractor is a uh, protractor our normal angler has special hooks so normally we can use this protractor with other js frameworks also <coughs> angular official document suggests using this tool so normally i told you right angular official documentation suggests using this tool the angular team plans to deprecate Proto protractor at the end of 2022 so we already discussed that protractor the support is going to be deprecated in the end of 2022 and another one is an web driver io web driver io is another etu testing tool so it is also used for the node js using uses a convenient syntax that controls the browser through its own implementation of the web driver distinct from the selenium so uh, so different from the selenium or through dev, dev tools protocol dev tools protocol means so something like puppeteer how the puppeteer access the chrome with headless browser so in the same scenario web driver web, web driver io also uses this one so what are the features of this one is actually web driver Oh, it is an open source JS project, so we can use it in the JS environments and everywhere. So the features of this one is normally the syntax is very easy and readable. So here web driver I/O, and also it is very flexible. So it has a good support for the community also. So these are the, the main things what we can consider in this web driver I/O. And another one is the test cave. So the, the remaining so many things are also there, but test cave is also one of the great alternative to the Selenium based tools. So normally, if you are using the Selenium-based tools and all those things, so if you don't want to use the Selenium-based tools, TestKF is a great best alternative. It is rewritten and open sourced at the end of 2016. So now you need to understand that TestKF also has a paid version, so that offer non-programming testing tools. So that means, so there is no need to write the programming for the in the paid version. So you can also have the paid version. normally test cave has been deprecated and now the new one has been released i think it is test cave studio so you can have a look at that one so this is the thing so what are the features in this test cave actually so test cave actually it is fast to setup so no fast to setup means so just you can run the npm install and run your first test on your browser as you want so fast to setup so just npm install test cave like that you can install it and you can use it cross browser and devices so you can use supports many browsers and devices can be used with uh, what i can say browser stack these all the third party tools we are using right which provides devices and browsers for your test so these all the cross browser supports this will be provided and also it includes running of tests in the headless chrome and headless firefox also so which we have discussed later uh, which we discussed previously and also it supports the parallel testing so test can run your tests on several browser instances at once so it can run all the tests several tests in several browsers at once <clears throat> so this this makes you to decrease the testing time so convenient error reporting so this is also one of the thing and a own ecosystem so this is also one of the feature you can consider so these are the features test cave has so now next last one is not but that the least one so most of the people will be using so test cave cypress cypress is an cypress or cypress whatever the name it will be cypress is a direct competitor of test cave so this is the direct competitor of test cave they are doing relatively the same which is injecting tests into your website but they try to do do it in a more modern and flexible and convenient way so what the test cave does it the same thing cypress also does it is a direct comp competitor but it will do it more flexible and convenient way it seems so the difference between them is that Cy cypress runs itself in the browser and controls your tests from there where test cave runs in node js and controls the test through a serialized communi communication with its injected script in the browser so that is the main difference so cypress.io runs itself in the browser whereas testk runs through the node js so what are the features of this cypress so normally the features of this cypress is cypress is sorry parallel testing so this was introduced in the version 3.1.0 i think something like that 3.3 version 3 and it has a good documentation solid and clear and native access to all your applications variables so without serialization test cave uh, so you will be having like that very convenient and running and debugging tools easy debugging and logging of the test process so now another one is the cross browser support so you can also have the cross browser support also so this is all about the different types of etu tests so these are all the things mainly we will be using the cypress so cypress now we can use it in angular also 
so test cave is also a one nice thing and for angler so pre uh, so right now the people are using steel protractor but protractor what is that one they are saying is so they are going to deprecate it in the late 2022 so i do i hope so so now we need to now in the angler latest version they are not at all giving the et test so protractor is not uh, added by default so we need to add our own etu testing tool by our own so previously protractor has been injected default just like the jasmine and karma but now jasmine and karma is there but protractor is not supported by the angler team they are not giving it by default so this is the thing you need to remember so we can use the protractor protractor learning the protractor is also important thing only why because so recently only protractor got deprecated previously all the older versions of angler still uses the protractor for et testing so we'll try to learn about this protractor also and also we'll learn about this cypress also cypress will be used for all the js frameworks whereas protractors mainly supports the angular thing so it provides a good documentation and the angular itself supports protractor so that is the reason so hope you understood about this etu testing tool so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you